God damn it. What a way to start the new year. At this rate, I'll be dead by Easter. Quiet down, Agent Jones. You're on the clock. Quiet down? Ha! <laughs> you, you have any idea what you've done? I'd be half naked in Havana right now if you hadn't shown up. Soaking up some rays, surrounded by a harem of bikini queens, a mojito in one hand, and a seafood slathered Havana style pizza in the other. What did I do? Agent Jones, don't let him take control of the conversation. The moment you let your guard down, he'll strike. And no red, remember? It's open. Come on in. You have questions for us. That's why you're here, isn't it?
Mr. Morgan, before we question you, allow me to first read you your rights. Anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. Please keep that in mind as you speak. Do we have permission to film this? Hmm? Don't worry, my fairy. They're free to do whatever they like. Something wrong, Mr. Morgan? <clears throat> I'm FBI Special Agent Aaliyah Davis, and this is- Simon Jones. An analyst from the Boston branch. He's been monitoring us for years now. Oh, uh, hi. <sighs> Seriously. A southern belle and a lonesome loser who can't catch a break. Quite the uncanny duo. You'd be the perfect stars for the latest video game. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> How many years has it been since someone came to chat with us? Oh, but... Don't ask me about my fairy. That's a private matter. It's hard to tell what he's thinking, but my eyes can't be deceived. If he's hiding something, it'll come out in his face. Letters of appreciation from the governor and the Department of Justice. They're caked in dust as if he doesn't even care about them. You solved many difficult cases across your career. Utilizing your own unique M.O. You've expertly cracked cases that were otherwise thought to be unsolvable. According to our records, after joining the FBI in 2002, you quickly solved two drug ring-related kidnapping cases. In 2003, you solved the Inside Out Flesh Skinner case in the suburbs of Pittsburgh. In 2004, the Jeffrey Dahmer wannabe case in Milwaukee, and also the Stuffed Human Collector case in St. Louis that very same year. Then, in 2005, you coincidentally happened to solve the Lise Clarkson murder case while on vacation. You went on to solve many other cases after that, all of them seemingly inexplicable. Did you really solve these cases all on your own? There are no records of you using a wide-scale investigative team or working with anyone else. How did you ever accomplish such monumental feats all by yourself? It was... All thanks to our talented partner. Partner. The FBI files show no record of you ever working with a partner. Do you mean you worked with some sort of unofficial partner or an outside confidant? Our partner is our partner. We've always worked together. Besides, Belle, you're forgetting one important thing. After the St. Louis case, we stopped by a diner on our way home and caught Thelma and Louise, two highly sought-after fugitives. <laughs> the smell. It doesn't surprise me at this point, but it'll be problematic in court if they decide his testimony is unreliable. I won't get another chance to talk to him face to face like this. I need to get him to stop smoking that for a bit. Excuse me, Mr. Morgan, but would you please refrain from consuming that while we speak? 
I'm talking about... Yes, that. <sighs> you don't need to worry about us. Don't get in our way and we won't get in yours. Unfortunately, questioning doesn't work like that. Our data needs to be consistent. Now please put out that stinking indulgence right this minute. What <sighs> if we say no? Then I'll put it out myself, using force. Whoa, whoa, Aaliyah. This is Morgan's house. Besides, it's legal in Massachusetts for individuals to consume cannabis in the comfort of their own homes. And I mean, come on. It's medicinal. Exactly. Francis Zack Morgan. He was once an FBI special agent, an extremely talented one. At least that's what they tell me. Perhaps he was a little too talented. Hey, Belle. Why are you dressed so handsomely? What are you talking about? The thick black accessory wrapped around your neck. That's a male necktie. The color black represents confidence and interest in the self. And your decision to wear a male tie symbolizes your declaration of war against a predominantly male society. Or perhaps it's a psychological barrier meant to hide the weakness that dwells deep within your psyche. We admire your bravery. I thought you retired from profiling. <laughs> Bullseye, huh? You're an easy one to read. In order to think with society, a man must first gouge out his eyes and cut off his ears. Don't judge a book by its cover. For someone who's supposed to have been one of our best, you've got an awful eye for people. Or did all that smoke and kill all your little gray cells? Okay, Aaliyah, that's enough. She's smart, but she's also more of a shrew than she lets on. Agent Jones, that's sexual harassment. <laughs> so, Belle, does that barrier of yours also protect you from violent criminals? <laughs> He's more dangerous than I thought. I can't read him. I'll just have to assault him head on with questions then. First, I'll try using the files on the table to shake him up. Stage four progressive malignant tumor. How do humans behave when they know death is just around the corner? And what if that human is also a high-functioning sociopath? Mr. Morgan, may I ask you a question purely out of curiosity? If it makes you uncomfortable, just let me know, and I'll retract it. Belle, what's wrong? You sure put a lot of effort into that approach. It's a question about death. About this body? Are you afraid of... What's coming? Think carefully about why we're smoking this, then ask us again. Honestly, we're not afraid. Rather, we find it intriguing. Intriguing? Belle, have you ever been to the Grand Canyon in winter? No. In the dead of winter, the Grand Canyon is terribly cold. Colder than you could imagine. A cold that no photograph could ever express. The sun. <laughs> Powerless. And the temperature drops below zero. Right in the middle of the day. Meaning? <laughs> Meaning. You can't really understand something. 
until you experience it for yourself. If you want to learn more about us, you need to gain more experience, Bell. An ornate antique chessboard. Looks like he stopped halfway through the game. But who was playing with him? Do you remember the homicides that took place in Lucare, Louisiana in 2005? We solved that case. Your report states the following. By coincidence, you encountered a serious incident in a town you visited while on vacation. You then decided to steal the right to investigate from the local law enforcement and took over the case. After several more homicides, you managed to apprehend the perpetrator. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> we stole the right to investigate from them. Just as you said. It all started when the body of a 16-year-old girl was discovered. You arrived in Lucare immediately after that, didn't you? We just can't seem to keep ourselves away from dead girls. Did you really visit that town just to take a vacation? We don't know. If you already have the report, then we suggest you read it, Bell. Either way, that case is closed. Closed? You sure about that? Don't you think this puzzle is still missing some crucial pieces? <laughs> Come on. No need to beat around the bush with us, Bell. They found Lee Clarkson's body. It was hidden deep within the Clarkson Food Delivery Services cold storage warehouse. After 14 years, we finally discovered the body of the very first victim. Do you know what this means? That's why we're here. The first victim in the case he solved, Lise Clarkson. And this is a photograph of what she looks like now. How will he react when he sees it? We're pleased that her body turned up. Deeply pleased. You claim to have closed this case, but now a lost body suddenly surfaced. Aren't you curious about the details? Body or not, we already solved that case. Lisa's body can't change anything now. And it certainly has nothing to do with us. I suspect the body was stored there rather than abandoned, due to the unnatural state it was found in. She was found frozen in a storage unit. Therefore, she looks exactly the same as she did when she disappeared. In fact, she's in such good condition that we can even determine the murder weapon and cause of death. Well, good for you. Even stranger is how unbelievably beautiful she looks. At first glance, few would guess she was a murder victim at all. She looks more like a piece of art, or a mythological figure from a painting. This keeps getting better and better. Better and better? Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> a corpse as beautiful as a goddess. Sounds just like our story. Hmm. <laughs> yes. That went okay. Now I'm sure that Morgan's hiding some. I may be able to get what I want if we go deeper into the documents. That chessboard looks rather old, and you can't even buy those ivory pieces anymore. Right, they were banned by the Sites Treaty. That was made in France in the 1900s, we know. It's in bad taste, but the weight of the ivory just feels so good in our hands. You play chess alone? Is that a crime? No, but it's a hard game to enjoy when you're all by yourself. He's probably just replicating famous games. Or trying to solve problems from a chess workbook. Right, Morgan? I may not look it, but I'm actually a bit of a chess nut myself. When I was in school, 
I used to pore over every issue of Chess Life, the magazine published by the U.S. Chess Federation. Well, unfortunately, your guess is completely wrong, Agent Jones. He isn't replicating a famous game, nor is he solving workbook problems. There isn't a single chess book to be found in this apartment. And I didn't find any chess-related websites in his internet history. He was simply playing chess. All alone. So... What's wrong with that, Belle? I don't understand it. How could a single human being seriously play as both sides? You just publicly confessed to stealing personal data. Seems like that's a much bigger problem. Oh no. Everything was done in a perfectly legal manner. We simply happened to intercept a handful of data being sent out from an unknown origin. Oh, now she's really trying to scare us. Did you hear that, my fairy? Serious nightmare fuel. Who is it? This my fairy character you keep speaking to. You can't see her? Such bad manners. You barge into our apartment, yet you don't even care about who else is living here. Dissociative Identity Disorder. In the past, it was known as Multiple Personality Disorder. You were subjected to an internal probe only once during your career, correct? They suspected that you had DID, but you denied it, and no problems arose during your test. Is this how you dealt with the psychological profiler back then, too? Saying strange things, weaving unrelated matters together, is that how you slipped through? You're free to draw your own conclusions, Belle. But my fairy clearly exists. She's been sitting right there on your lap this entire time. <laughs> hey, no violence allowed in here, Belle. Wouldn't want to scare my fairy, now would we? You may be wondering why we decided to unearth all these old files. Everything happens for a reason. The moment Lee Clarkson's body was found, we did the best we could to start our own local investigation. But there wasn't much we could actually investigate due to the damage caused by the hurricane. Then we assume you also questioned everyone who worked in the warehouse. Of course. We question all the Clarkson Food Delivery Services employees who staff the warehouse and its owner, but we still have yet to obtain any key testimonies. Par for the course with a 14-year-old case, if you ask me. Mm. Not to mention how bad the timing was. Most of the employees were on vacation. So, you gave up on the investigation and came to see us instead. <laughs> Remember what happened, my fairy? That warehouse. That man. So incoherent. Such a pain. Hey, are you talking about the guy who managed the vault where Lisa's body was found? Yeah, I think he started working there in 2005. Remember, Aaliyah? You said he was a pain to deal with, too. man, yes? Hmm. No need to answer. If you don't want to. I'm sure you've already put him under surveillance. Textbook FBI protocol. Isn't there someone else you should have talked to before coming to us? Such a... We were unable to reach Patricia Clarkson. You look surprised. I thought you already knew. After all, you visited Louisiana last week. We assumed you met with her during your time there. We haven't been to Louisiana. Not in 14 years. 
Is that so? We've been right here in our apartment this entire time. That man is our witness. Aren't you, Simon? <sighs> He's right. He didn't even take a single step outside on Christmas Eve, which means that I didn't get to either. Are you positive about that? I took the liberty of checking some airline records. Last Friday, the name Billy Bishop was listed on a morning flight out of Boston. This is the fake name you used to use as an agent, isn't it? <laughs> a mere coincidence. Yet that's not all. That evening on the same day, a man with a large scar on his forehead allegedly purchased an 89 Cadillac from a small used car lot in Lucare. He reportedly said he wanted something old, big, and strong. The owner of the car lot felt it was a strange order, so it stuck in his mind. Our world is filled with mysteries. And they always have the most bizarre timing. Incidentally, on the following day, an identical Cadillac was taken to a scrapyard in Trenton. Trenton, New Jersey. You can find that type of car anywhere. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> Morgan's right. Everything happens for a reason. Even this messy room. There must be a reason for it, especially when it comes to those strangely tidy spots. They're practically begging me to question them. DVDs are all over. I know that he's a shut-in, but this still seems like way too many for one person. And I've never heard of any of these titles before. A stinking indulgence. And a massive DVD collection. You must live a very comfortable life. We're retired, remember? Retired in your 40s. I'm envious. But who doesn't love movies, Belle? I'm not a fan. Oh, that won't do. You should dedicate all the free time you have to watching movies. It's practically an unwritten law. Films guide us. Films are filled with every important life lesson there is. Is that so? For example, they live. 1988, directed by John Carpenter. That film taught us a valuable lesson. Always put on your sunglasses before a fight. You know, you got a point. Movies teach us about everything we need to know. I learned about the right way to eat frozen pizza from Cobra. It's one of Stallone's best films. Before that, I wouldn't be caught dead trying to eat frozen pizza. I thought it wasn't fit for human consumption, but that film changed my life. Simon, that has nothing to do with the film. You're just talking about pizza. Holly MVA supplements. And a home IV kit. It's probably filled with highly concentrated vitamin C. He said that being on the verge of death is intriguing. But then why does he have such an elaborate home medical care setup? How does he truly feel? Do you like fresh vegetable juice? Why would you think that? There's a juicer in your sink that hasn't been washed yet. And do I smell the faint fragrance of baked beans? You didn't use much salt, did you? What are you implying? You just told me that you find impending death to be intriguing. That confused me. When I look around your room, all I can see are the many ways in which you're resisting death. Poly MVA treatment, highly concentrated vitamin C IVs, fresh vegetable juice, vegetable protein without salt, gallons of vitamin D milk for fat and calcium. The ambivalence. Yes. What? Two contradictory emotions. Mixing. Coexisting together. An adult 
mature mind is never satisfied with only one response. It's common sense. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> This room's a total mess. But certain spots look perfectly clean. Is it just a coincidence? Mm. No. There are no coincidences with this man. Mr. Morgan. I found several spots in this room that look strangely clean. Did you tidy up a bit because you knew we were coming? Those are... Sanctuaries. They've existed from the start. Sanctuaries. That's right. Sacred places. Hovels for pure souls, if you will. Were there originally objects in those hovels? Something you didn't want us to see? The soul's still there. We haven't touched a thing. But we know you can't see anything. Hey, Simon, don't touch the sanctuary. Uh, s sorry. <coughs> That's a sanctuary. Don't ever touch it again. You've been watching us for four and a half years, and you couldn't even figure that much out. Uh, my bad. It's my first time actually coming inside, you know. <laughs> You're earning far more than you deserve, then. What were you doing all day in that black suburban? We thought wiretapping was your specialty. Don't tell me. Crossword puzzles. What do you think, my fairy? Four and a half years. All that time, and what does he have to show for it? Crossword puzzles? No way. Come on, I thought you knew. I'm a Sudoku guy. Agent Jones. Oh, right. He's completely taken control of the conversation. At this rate, we'll never get anywhere. I need to press him some more. Agent Jones. The briefcase isn't even that big. How long does he intend to keep that up? Does he have pizza menus stuffed inside there or something? Agent Jones, did you find the files? Mr. Morgan, do you recognize these files? Oh. Whoa! Ow! We told you. That's a sanctuary. Let him go! Assaulting an FBI agent is an obstruction of you. justice. We told you. Go! Down! Say back! Say back! Sanctuary! Down! Say back! Ah! 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 Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Morgan? Uh. I cut my finger with that can opener this morning. I thought I stopped the bleeding, but it seeped through. How could I be so stupid? Everything should be fine now. I'm sorry for being so careless. I made sure to read through your file and learn about your condition. The color red. Such an unusual thing to fear. Please, accept my deepest apologies. I, I'm sorry too, Morgan. I don't know what I was thinking. I'll never touch one of your sanctuaries ever again. And no more red either. <laughs> Don't ever touch one again. I, I told Now, may we return to our discussion? Oh, 
Don't worry. I won't let them touch you. Strangely enough, this man has a fear of the color red, and I believe that fear is connected to the Greenville case. Here's another empty space. What does the word sanctuary really mean to him? Hovels for pure souls? Soon after Agent Jones started monitoring him, he was ordered to go through Morgan's trash, but he didn't find anything. Morgan used this machine to cut up everything, from his mail to his supermarket receipts. Then he even went as far as taking out his trash in parts. This is a very large shredder. Is there something you don't want people finding out about? Hmm. Good question. But we never know when some curious civil servants may come and sift through our trash now, do we? You're already retired. What are you so worried about? <laughs> it's just a simple habit from back when we were still on duty. Didn't they bang that into your head when you were up in Quantico? Some habits are hard to break, no matter how hard you try. Could you tell me what exactly the word sanctuary means to you? Sanctuaries are sanctuaries. Nothing more and nothing less. That doesn't explain anything. Why do you wish to know? Just curious. Belle. You're a much ruder person than you initially seem to be. Don't you agree, my fairy? What do our sanctuaries have to do with the investigation? If you're out of questions, then how about just going home? Hey, mind if I jump in here? What is it, Simon? We hope you've got a real question for us. Well, actually, I'm also a little curious myself. No one's supposed to touch any sanctuary, right? That's what we said. What about you, though? You can't even touch them yourself? Are there any extenuating circumstances? What are you getting at? I mean, I doubt if any of this really matters, but if no one can touch the sanctuaries, then how do you clean them? Mr. Morgan, I'd like to ask you some questions about this case now. We don't want to remember that town. I'm sorry, but there's no way around this. I remember hearing about this case on the news when I was still a student. A high school girl named Anna Graham was murdered and the FBI stepped in to take over the case. I also remember it becoming a sprawled investigation due to evidence found in the victim's throat. Is that correct? After that case, you went on sick leave for two years. And when you returned, you requested to be switched over to desk work. What happened? That's a private matter. None of your business, Bill. Were you traumatized? Hmm. It's a common problem with prolific agents such as yourself. But there's another possibility that may make more sense. Perhaps you simply finished making preparations. What are you getting at? Thinking too much about something will always turn it into a problem. The Greenvale case. Don't you think it resembles the Luke Carre case? Read the report. We have nothing else to say. I just need one more push. One more thing that can summon up the past. jar of honey with honeycomb inside it. There's nothing strange about it, but it still gives me a weird feeling. That's royal jelly. Huh? You were staring at the jar, weren't you? Do you find it strange 
that there's honeycomb inside. We wanted to harvest royal jelly in its most natural state. The queen's main food source, created from the worker bee's secretions. It's a perfect food, filled with power, meant to fuel the birth of the next queen. By absorbing it into our own bodies, we too can acquire that power. Incidentally, did you know that all the worker bees are female? No. Guess they didn't teach you that at Quantico. Male bees are only born to inseminate, and they're born from unfertilized eggs to boot. They have short lives and don't even get stingers. Sort of feels like a glimpse into the future of our society, wouldn't you agree? Women are gifted with the power to conceive, give birth, and nourish their children. But men, men are consumed with the job of providing women with the chance to do so. If women no longer had to rely on men for the seeds of life, they would soon cease to desire them, we believe. Be careful, Simon. Huh? Of what? Your bell's already stolen the reins from you. <laughs> Looks like another old antique. He collects milk cartons, but treats valuable antiques like trash. What's going on in his head? The silver clock in that trash pile. Is that an H5? That's right. John Harrison's fifth chronometer. Completed in 1770. After many years, he completed it and presented it to the Board of Longitude in order to end their feud with him. That's only a replica, of course. You like clocks? Clocks are amazing. Prime fruit of the human race's intellect, we took the invisible idea of time and manifested it in these. Yeah, I love clocks too. Absolutely fascinating. I disagree. Oh? Why? Time is valuable precisely because it can't be seen. Yet nowadays, people can't tell what time it is unless it's measured in numbers. Talk about idiocy. I don't mean to side with the Board of Longitude, but remember, humans used to cross oceans with the stars alone. We have our eyes to read moon charts and study the sky. We don't need clocks. What if it's cloudy or storming? All you need is courage and a love for adventure. <laughs> Hear that, my fairy? Courage? And a love for adventure? <laughs> Come on, Belle. Surely you know how many lives have been claimed by your pals' courage and adventure. <sighs> hey, hold on a second here. That Board of Longitude thing, what the heck is that? I mean, I've heard of it before. I'm an FBI analyst, remember? I just sort of can't remember it right now. I know what it is, really. I'm telling the truth. Come on, Aaliyah, back me up here. Aaliyah? Mr. Morgan, please look at this. What did we just say? We don't want to remember Greenvale. This isn't a photo from Greenvale. Look closely at it. Former Special Agent Francis Zack Morgan. This photograph predates Greenvale. It's from the Lucare case you worked on in 2005. Red. Red tree. Red tree. Yes. A red tree. Greenvale wasn't the first place you saw one of these. The Greenvale case and the Lise Clarkson murder case, they're connected by these red trees, aren't they? Red trees. Answer me. What are these trees? Red trees. I want the truth. Tell me everything you know. <laughs> The red trees. You really did your homework. 
Well done, Belle. You're good. Damn good. Mm. Are you ready to talk now? I want to know what went down in Lucare in 2005. <sighs> Fine. We'll tell you. We'll tell you what happened in that town. Yes. It was that red tree. That red tree ruined my life. It was... <sighs> it was a sultry summer day. The sun comes down hard on you in the south, like a torrential downpour of demonic whispers. It all started back in that sweltering summer. We still had our best friend with us back then. The other me. <laughs> my better half. Somebody needs you, you can't turn away. You're their only lifeline, just a hero, a bullet for hire, working alone. Always a voice, a cry in the darkness, an echo of pain that's been long forgotten. But it haunts me, my destiny, to be alone. There's a time when you see life for what it's gotta be. You should know they'll destroy you, but call to me. Zack. Zack. Can you hear me, Zack? There you are, Zack. <laughs> Sleeping again? Well, rise and shine. It's time for us to head back out into the chaos. Isn't that right, Zach?
Zack, it looks like she wants us to join her for breakfast. Perhaps this town's finally starting to warm up to us. Look at that, Zack. She's welcoming us with open arms. She's even willing to share that tasty morsel with us. What an honor. Hurry up and chow down, mister. Unless you like your breakfast stale. What an amazing place. I've been on top of the moon since the moment I got here. And the name of this wonderful town, Lacare. Sounds like French to me. But what does it mean? I'm the chef, David. If you want to know about the town, you'd better ask the concierge. Only amateur chefs flap their gums about stuff that ain't food related. Did you hear that, Zach? He's a true professional. You say something, mister? Uh, no, not to you. I was just talking to Zack. Zack? Uh, please don't ask me about Zack. It's a private matter. If you say so, still. Never thought the FBI would ever come out to a little old town like ours. I do work for the FBI, but I didn't come here for an investigation. I just happened to stop by on my way to New Orleans. <sighs> Never thought there'd be a murder out here either. And it was a 16-year-old kid. Now I tell you, this country seen better days. What you reckon, mister? Zach, he's definitely a professional, but it seems like he's also a bit lonesome. That's good. Ambivalence exists everywhere. Folks say the killer used an axe. Hell of an old-fashioned choice if you ask me. Actually, Chef David, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions about the incident. Well, shoot. I ain't the one you ought to be asking, Mr. FBI. I only heard what I heard. But seeing as you're fixing to grill me, I can tell you what I know. Please do. I appreciate it. You said the victim was a 16-year-old. Did you know her? Well, sure. I reckon the whole town did. Meaning? She's Lise Clarkson, the little grandbaby of the Clarkson family. The Clarkson family? That's right. You ain't seen they sign on your way in here? The one above that huge coal storage complex. Should have had a dragonfly on it. Anyway, that's the Clarkson family seal. They own most of the land around here. From the sugar plantations right down to the food processing plant. Yeah, I reckon they got a stake in just about everything. They even own the water tower on the edge of town, you know. They're the ones who built up this town, and they still support it. What do you know about the Clarkson's house? Now, I ain't got nothing bad to say, but I'm gonna talk straight to you. You best steer clear of that place. That family ain't just some gang. They're a whole different kind of beast. They folks with real power. Remnants of the good old boys who shaped America in the early days. Especially the head of the family, P.J. Clarkson. He's the kind of monster who goes around eating other monsters. And I'm sure he's on edge now with his granddaughter getting murdered and all. So don't go barging in with that shiny FBI badge of yours and think you'll be safe for nothing. Things are different down here. So if you plan on sticking around, you best remember that. I see. I'll keep that in mind. Is the local law enforcement investigating the case? <laughs> Shoot, mister, what you think? Now, I told you this ain't no city. We in the bonafide boondocks here. They got the know-how to break up fights and keep folks from killing each other when they piss you off. They sit down and talk it out with you heart to heart. And when that don't work, 
they just beat your ass. That's the deep south for you. This murder ain't like that, though. A little kid got killed. A weird way. Like something on a TV show. The sheriff's department ain't never seen nothing like this. Live and Let Die, Angel Heart, and The Pelican Brief. Right? Nine out of ten people will name those titles when you ask them to think of a film set in New Orleans. They're all excellent movies, but to me they lack realism. Due to my line of work, I have a tendency to think deeply about what feels real and what doesn't. What's your point? Cat People. That's my point. Cat People, 1982, directed by Paul Schrader. The crowning achievement of Nastasia Kinski, the ultimate muse of the 80s. The most vital element of that movie is the reality it depicts. Leopards who turn into humans have intercourse with humans and turn back into leopards. Then they can only turn back into humans again if they mutilate their lovers. I was awestruck by the sheer reality of it all. Understand? I'm talking about hyper-realism. After watching it, I felt like I just had to experience the world of cat people for myself. That's why I decided to visit New Orleans. Uh, okay. Another vital element of cat people is the presence of Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell from Blue Thunder. Oh, talk about a masterpiece. Listen carefully, David. Only an amateur would call A Clockwork Orange his best movie. His best movies are Cat People and Blue Thunder, period. You need to remember this, because it's the truth. Mm, whatever you say, mister. So, uh, what's your point again? Never mind, don't worry about it. I already covered all the important parts. When you say it was like something from a TV show, what exactly do you mean? Hey, mister, why do you look so excited, huh? Like a kid asking grandma to read him a fairy tale. I just can't seem to keep myself away from young women who died in bizarre ways. Oh. Well, I ain't seen it with my own eyes. But folks say they found the body hanging under a bridge on the bayou. And under that bridge, there was some kind of altar. An altar? Like something they use in black magic. Something horrible. Voodoo? Nah. Wasn't nothing like that. Just a weird altar. That's all? Oh, and the body was all cut up in pieces. Scattered around the altar-like. So she was sacrificed? That's what the fella who discovered her said, yeah. Bingo, Zack. This case has got our names all over it. By the way, Mr. FBI, I ain't seen a car in the parking lot. How'd you get all the way out here, huh? Don't tell me you walked. Well, that's a very good question. Chef David, you've got a sharp eye. It's true that I didn't park my car in your parking lot. Do you know why? Can't say I do. Because it was stolen. Huh? But you with the FBI, right? Even FBI cars can be stolen. It could happen after you park your car on the side of the road and go off to do some legwork. When you're eating lunch, when you're watching a movie, when you're asleep at night, when you're buying cigarettes at the local supermarket, your car can be stolen anywhere. That's precisely what it means to be an FBI agent. In my case, my car was stolen while I was on my way down here. But no need to worry. I already reported it to the local authorities. And I've also already acquired another mode of transportation. Another mode? Want to hear the details? Not really. But I'll listen if you want me to. Then please do. After I finished my work in Houston, I flew to New Orleans. Then, I rented a car at the airport. Whenever I visit the West Coast, I always rent a convertible, especially in California. But now I'm in hot and sticky Louisiana, so I decided on a brand new hybrid car with a fully equipped air conditioning system. A hybrid car? Oh yes, they're marvelous. Vehicles that utterly defy everything you think you know about cars. Now, in the year 2005, it feels like we finally entered the 21st century. Stomp down on the gas all you want. The engine won't make a sound. It's silent? At first, I felt like the landscape was moving past me on its own. Give it a few more years, and I'm sure we'll start seeing cars that run purely on electricity. Who knows? In a decade or so, Electric sports cars may end up lining the parking lots of Silicon Valley. I can see it now. It's the world of the last starfighter. 
1984, directed by Nick Castle. It's famous for being the first film to utilize realistic CG, but I couldn't care less about that. See, I was mesmerized by the beautifully refined mech designs. It even made me wish that I could be one of them myself, especially the Gunstar spacecraft no other sci-fi movie has ever had. So, uh, yeah, where'd your hybrid car get stolen? Sorry, I got off topic. I noticed it was missing after I finished my lunch and walked out of the diner. Incidentally, this diner was located at the entrance to a small town just south off the I-10. I went out to get back in it, but my hybrid car was nowhere to be found. I remembered exactly where I parked it, right between a blue pickup truck and a hedgerow. But when I came back from lunch, it had completely vanished. In short, someone stole it. And in its place, they left me this. What? A skateboard. A skateboard? Yes. While I was sliding my lunch into my stomach, someone was busy replacing my brand new hybrid car with a wooden board attached to... Remarkable, don't you think? So then how did you get here? By riding the skateboard, obviously. Why do you look so surprised? No, I couldn't ride the board very well at first. But by the time I hit the three-mile mark, I'd more or less gotten the hang of it. By the ten-mile mark, I'd even learned to do a few tricks. It was a journey of self-discovery. Not even I knew I had this latent talent sleeping inside me. This summer's gonna be another hot one. It's supposed to get over 95 today. Watch out you don't go getting heat stroke. Felice Clarkson case needs us. Don't you think so, Zach? The cat people are what guided us to New Orleans. We should be thanking Malcolm McDowell. Once we get home, let's watch Blue Thunder again. I'm already looking forward to it. Aren't you, Zach? Zach. The searing light. Mmm, <laughs> these scents. It's the deep south. Mmm, that was a fabulous breakfast. You're the world's greatest chef. Uh, wait, mister. You didn't take a single bite. Well, the tea was to die for. But I'd prefer coffee next time. What would a morning be without coffee? on Rouge, we're chasing it all over America, but I feel like we're finally on the verge of finding something now. Don't you, Zach? You think it's about time we ordered a new briefcase? Yes, I know this one carries a lot of memories, but it's seen too much. This hole's from the shootout in Tucson, and this stain's from Miami. Ah, uh, Miami. Now that 
that was a fascinating case. Billy, our perp, cut his own torso right in two. Even with the help of the drugs, a feat like that still requires incredible mental fortitude. I was so impressed that I forgot I'd left my briefcase on the floor. Same floor his blood gushed out onto. I know, Zach, I know. Now isn't the time for a trip down memory lane. An emergent drug that's been on the rise in four southern states. Personally, I think it originated right here in Louisiana. And Lise Clarkson's murder must be connected to it somehow. The 16-year-old girl who was murdered her body was found beneath a bridge over the bayou, along with a strange altar. The powerful man who essentially controls the town of Lucare, and he seems to be more fearsome than your average gangster. I doubt he'll be willing to cooperate with any law enforcement, Zack. You know, I keep thinking about that movie we stopped to see on our way here, Zach. The Island, 2005, directed by Michael Bay. For a movie being shown at a cinema complex, it was surprisingly artistic. An experimental setting mixed with hard-hitting drama. It was art house sci-fi. That director's going to change the history of art house films. Are you following me here? This is another special film that's setting a new standard, just like Star Wars and Blade Runner did. This is a turning point, Zach. You may be witnessing the birth of a vital new word that will soon become a part of film history. Yes, this single movie may be responsible for creating a whole new genre several years down the line, a genre known as island movies. I sure like the sound of that. Don't you, Zach? I'm very satisfied with the decorations and the size of this closet, Zach. And it's even got a security box. What else could a man ask for? It's proof that we're still safely inside the fringes of modern civilization. Hey there, Chef. What's cooking? Chef, what are you talking about, sir? I'm the concierge, David. I just heard from our chef that you wish to learn the meaning behind our town's name. Yes, I've gathered that Lucare is French, but does it have any special meaning? Why, yes, sir, of course it does. A very clear, logical meaning. All names have meanings. Would you like to know what this one means? Yes, I would. Jolly good, sir. Then allow me to explain. Lucare means square in French. Ah. And? That's it. That's it? Yes, that's it, sir. 
Do take a gander at the town map in the lobby if it fancies you. It's beautiful, valuable, and old. I'm sure you'll understand once you see it. Now, please excuse me, sir. If you ever need anything, please don't hesitate to ask. Did you see that, Zack? That was clearly David. Not a twin, not a split personality, just the work of a true professional. It's bizarre, but I can understand it. Remember what they say, the job makes the man. Feel that, Zack? Dozens of paintings no one will ever see. A faint scent of tobacco baked into these walls for over a century. Now that's what I call a hotel. Zack, can you see him? His fashion sense is beyond me, but he appears to be a gentleman. Perhaps we should talk to him. Nice tie. Did you buy it here? It's been a long time since someone spoke to me. No one these days ever tries to see me. They can see what's far in the distance, but are blind to what's in front of them. No. Maybe they're only pretending not to see. That's what civilized society does to people. Exactly. Ever since mankind got their hands on civilization, they zoomed away at a frightening speed. Zoomed away from what? <laughs> Don't be a fool. You know the answer. As for me, just call me Hunga. Hunga title given to a leader in a certain religion. Is that what you are? Do you comprehend the Oracle? The Oracle? Put on your religion hat, Zach. Here we go. Fell tin maidens in the shrine of hunger. Find the flying serpent in the ambiguous zero. Dance with the flying serpent, and you will glimpse the other world. Ten maidens and an ambiguous zero. Got it. But what do you mean by other world? Follow the oracle. <laughs> Zack, did you hear all that? Looks like we've already taken our first step into chaos. But such is our duty. We need to accept the chaos, let it inside, then carefully dismantle it piece by piece. And after we've put all the pieces back into their rightful places, the truth will reveal itself. Let's capture the truth and present it with a shiny pair of silver bracelets, Zack.
Zach, this is Lucare. I think I'm finally starting to understand what our concierge was trying to say. You can tell this town was built by a very methodical person. No, wait. Maybe they just didn't care and that's why it ended up this way. It's just another symbol of mankind's obsession with molding nature to fit our own rules. Zach, what did you think of Hoongun's or Despite all the dramatic build-up, it's little more than a childish riddle. Heartwarming, really. Exactly the kind of feeling one gets from the good old-fashioned countryside. Now let's start by tracking down those ten maidens. The oracle gave us a place and an act. We need to go to the Shrine of Hunger and fell ten maidens. Now where in this town can one satiate their hunger? The hotel and... Where? And the ten things that need to be knocked down. Alexis's Diner and Lane. This is it, Zach. There are even pins and a bowling ball on the sign. I bet we'll be able to eat some Cajun cuisine and bowl there. Maybe even both at the same time. Nice job, Zach. I knew you'd be able to find it. Now for the other oracle. There's no flying serpent on this map. Could it be a contrail or perhaps a dragon? I'm sure we'll find out later. First, let's just figure out where we need to go. Do you know what the ambiguous zero represents? Zero is usually treated as a base number, but under what conditions would a base number be ambiguous? The answer is temperature, Zach. Yes. Zero degrees for the Clarkson Food Delivery Service's cold storage warehouse. That's got to be it. Even with this blazing sun in the sky, they can easily keep the temperature below freezing. Be honest now, Zach. You knew the answer from the very start, didn't you? And how about that hoon gun? What a mysterious character. His oracles may end up determining how much time we spend in this town. Sorry, boss, but this is a smoke-free hotel. If you're dying of smoke, head out the entrance and you'll find a smoking area in the rear parking lot. Don't tell me. You're the bell. At your service, boss. Are you good friends with the concierge and the chef? Eh, we work at the same place, yeah. But uh, I can't really say whether we're good friends with each other. We're all professionals, though. Nothing more, nothing less. I believe we've struck gold here, Zach. It just screams deep south. Actually, no, it doesn't. This is all his charm. So, if I want to smoke, I should go out the entrance and around to the rear parking lot? Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, I'll play by your rules. Zach, here's another perfect symbol of the human condition. Hunting trophies. And it's a buffalo hunting trophy. Now that's a surprise. I've seen several trophies made out of human skin, but never a buffalo's. Looking at him brings out this strange feeling from within me. Yes, the very same feeling I got when watching a certain film from 1984, directed by Peter Hyams, 2010. The last scene in that film filled me with such a sublime, majestic feeling. It was filled with everything that was missing from the finale of 2001 A Space Odyssey. Just talking about it makes me want to watch it again. Let's watch it once we get home. Promise, Zach.
Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on GBHBL.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon and help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal. What else is life for?